Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Rob Appel. Welcome to the set here at Stitch in Heaven all the way in beautiful Quitman, Texas. I'm going to take a moment and make sure I'm logged in, that you're all logged in. I've got the iPad over here so we can see a little more what's going on. So I'm just going to take a minute while we're getting started. Everybody settle in. We're going to do a real cool demonstration on how to put together the basic units for this quilt here. And so let me just make sure I can see what you can all see. I'm hoping uh, it all sounds good, looks good, all that kind of stuff. Let's see here. Oh, and I'm on the wrong channel. That, that would certainly change things, wouldn't it? Here we go. <laughs> okay, now I can see what's going on. Fantastic. And that's what I wanted to make sure. Because the camera is across the room, I wanted to make sure I could see over here that I see Pam and Sherry and Barbara are here already. So thank you, everybody, for being here. We've got several other folks that are logged on. So now you can chat, send me questions. I can see what's happening. So I will have the iPad here to help me out just a little bit. Uh, but I know you're all right here. So let's officially say welcome, 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 everybody. Happy Wednesday. Um, I am all the way out in Quitman, Texas. I am at headquarters. I'm here at uh, Stitch in Heaven, and it's an incredible quilt shop. If you haven't been here uh, yesterday on Facebook, we went live and did a not much of a walkabout, but every Tuesday morning we do a thing called Coffee with Anita, and Anita is one of the wonderful employees here that does a lot with the YouTube channel and marketing, and like I said, she drinks coffee and shows you around the store Tuesday morning. So yesterday we were talking a bunch about some of the fun kits that were available and also talking about the Splice Magic. So I'm going to show you all a bunch of the wonderful quilts from the book Splice Magic, which I think is really, really cool. But I really want to promote something that's really dear uh, to my heart. I'm super pumped about this. And I mentioned it yesterday. Um, and that is, here's my, my notes. Here's my example right here. Uh, my favorite needles as well. These are the Schmetz sharps or microtex, I should call them. These happen to be the chrome version, so they're extra special. But what I want to let you all know, October 20th, and in the description on this video and now on stitchinheaven.com under the classes, um, so along the top uh, bar, you can hit classes and then drop down, hit classes again. You'll see Rhonda's picture there. There's a really cool red and blue thumbnail. You can now start signing up. I only have 100 seats for this event and we know it's going to sell out incredibly fast. So I wanted to let all of my uh, dedicated followers know today that you can now sign up. There's a link there. The class is $29.99. And basically we're going to send you a wonderful pack of uh, assortment of pack and needles a color code chart, a great book from Schmetz, and you'll get that uh, just in time to follow along or maybe even a couple weeks early, but you'll get that once you register. Um, and basically the cost of uh, the, the registration is to cover the needles and a little bit of the shipping at our cost. Um, it's a huge assortment of needles. And then it's an hour long Zoom class and Rhonda Pierce is going to be our presenter. She works directly with Schmetz Needle Group. Um, she's incredibly knowledgeable. She's going to teach us everything we need to know about the sizes, what the names mean, um, some of the different coatings, what you would use your different needles for, you know, when you're going to use a sharp, when you're going to use a wing needle, when you're going to use a universal or an embroidery or a denim or the sizes of what is a 9014 versus an 8012 and a lot of the other information that goes along with that. So we've been putting out some great videos for you right here on our YouTube channel under the So Well brand, um, troubleshooting videos that I've been doing. And the number one question that was being asked is teach us more about needles. And I know a bit about needles, but I tell you, there is nobody that knows more about how to make two inches of steel awesome than my dear friend Rhonda Pierce. So make sure you sign up. Like I said, you're the first to hear about it. We only have 100 seats. Sign up, uh, pay your funds, and you'll get your needles, you'll get your color chart, you'll get your book, and that way you can follow along right in class. Get your questions written down because we'll have plenty of time for questions and answer after the presentation so we really can all learn about needles together. So that I'm super, super excited about. Um, 
double check in here to make sure. Oh, we have a South Africa. That's pretty exciting joining us this afternoon. Um, how's it sound, everybody? I'm not listening on the monitor here. Does everything sound okay? I'm on these uh, new microphones, as you can probably see still. Want to make sure everybody's happy. I see that there's a bunch of you out there. But uh, anyway, so that was my promotion. And I'll leave this here so I remember to say it again. I don't want to forget to make sure everybody can sign up for Rhonda's class. There was something else I kept talking about in the videos, but I forgot to promote last week. And there's something really important about this thread stand. So this is one we also have available here at Stitch in Heaven. You can get it on the website. Just put in thread stand in your little search bar. It has a metal base. You can get two different versions of this one, and this one's only 15 bucks, and it still has the metal base. You definitely want the weighted metal base. They make another version that has plastic, and it's very lightweight, and even with your thread on it, it often falls over, and that changes all of the things I was trying to help and teach all of you in the troubleshooting with thread tensions video. So anyways, this is one of those extra thread stands. It fits and works with any sewing machine. If you don't have one of these, make sure you get one of these right away, but make sure you get the metal base and the ones here at Stitch in Heaven have that metal base with them, like I said. So I forgot to show it yesterday and I went and wanted to make sure I had it with today's supplies. I thought that'd be pretty cool. And the other thing I have with today's supplies, because I've already been talking like crazy, is a nice glass of water. So make sure, wellness, you're uh, hydrated while you get ready for today's big demo. We're going to dive into that right away here. Oh, wonderful. I can tell you're all saying the sound is wonderful. Appreciate that feedback, everybody. I, Like I said, super glad you're here. Um, so let's dive right into today's class. This is in lieu of a recorded tutorial this week. I thought it'd be really fun to do a live class. I only have one camera angle, so I'll do my best to go slow and make sure you can all see what you need. Um, I will probably do another tutorial for this once we get the real kits finished for this specific quilt. Now this quilt is the backdrop quilt. I brought it with me out here to Texas from California, but this is what you see me now standing in front of all the time. And I absolutely love it. It was also the quilt that I made in the Rob breaks into a quilt shop and makes a quilt overnight video. And if you've seen that video, you actually learn how to make this entire quilt start to finish machine quilted, bound and everything. But it is a 45 minute long video and it is shot in the dark because I literally did it overnight here at the store. And I only used the lights of the cameras and the sewing machines that were on. And I thought it was really, really fun. Feedback has been great. You all think it's really fun, but it's a long way to watch the whole tutorial. So all you really need to know about the quilt behind me is it is from this book called Splice Magic. And there are a bunch of quilts that are done in this book. So this is a technique and then it's going to offer recipes that all go within that technique. So let me show you a couple. This was the first one I got very inspired by, but I was going to do a quick quilt demo. This is a little baby quilt. This is one charming little quilt. And you can see it's basically a rainbow of colors. And you can really see, though, the individual units of the splice magic. So I'm going to teach you how to, with one set of squares, make a large and two medium half square triangles of the same fabrics. That's the technique we are now talking about when I say splice magic. So when you look at this quilt, you can see that individual block pretty well laid out. And this is a, just a fun rainbow style, gradient style quilt showing all the blocks traveling in the same direction. And we're actually coming back to this project when we get to this. So this was the first one I saw in the book that I thought that's super simple, that's super easy. And I would like to demo that quilt uh, and do something with that. But this, as with all awesome quilts, right, inspiration led to uh, creation, we'll call it. How's that sound? So anyways, let me just put this one down here. Now, if you saw yesterday's Facebook Live, uh, you did see this quilt here. This is a two fabric quilt. It features a white on white. And I just love Fabrics that look like solids or read as solids, but have a little something like a tonal tone that give it a little extra texture. So let me see if I can hold this up nice and big. And you can see here, this is a whole different design, a whole different shape, a whole different looking quilt. But if you break down those elements, again, look for the big half square triangle and the two small half square triangles of the same fabrics, or just of all the fabrics in this particular case. This is also a splice magic quilt with the same technique that I'm going to show you how to cut and uh, construct these here in just a moment. So this is one other example that you learn how to make if you get the book, which I just think is really, really cool. And of course, if you did this quilt, like even though I'm calling it two fabrics, you could do it with an ombre and still get a really, really neat gradient. I think that would be really incredible to see. 
got to make sure I don't put the quilts under the presser foot because I am going to sew. So if I make a big mess over here, we're just going to have to tidy up all over again. So <laughs> forgive me for trying to stay organized. Now, this quilt we showed yesterday, this quilt's super cool because the thing that I, well, one of the things that I love about being part of Stitch in Heaven is the awesome kits because we know, especially after COVID, there are a bunch of brand new quilt makers out there. And well, let me just show you this first before I show you the quilt. These kits are in Incredible. I almost said insane, but that doesn't sound right. That's a good uh, surfer term, but it's not probably a great sewing term. Uh, you do get the book, again, that shows you how to make all of these quilts. Um, and the fabrics are all going to be basically organized, set up for you here. Super nice and easy, labeled and cut. And let me see if... Um, that's right, because with this technique, you need to have your strips or then your squares made. Some of the other cuts are actually laser cut all the way down to the triangle shapes. These ones are going to be cut into your strips, which you'll need as your bases. Um, so very easy. Oops, make sure I get that book back, back in there. So when you get a kit, they are all the fabrics you need for the uh, quilt tops, which I just think are really, really, really cool. And that kit, as I was starting to show you, makes this quilt here. Kind of a fun Americana quilt, but it was actually based off of the theme fabric they're using from the back. You're also going to see this theme fabric if I'll hold it still for a second in the borders. And then you can see a good portion of the design there. And this one's fun because not only did they use the splice magic blocks, but they also added in a secondary block or just a solid block to bring out some of that other design element or increase just kind of the look of the project. So you see that either in the neutral fabrics or in those kind of checkerboard looking fabrics, which are actually stars when you get up nice and close. But that's that quilt there for you. And again, just fantastic. So let's put this giant thing over here. We'll get those folded up later for you. Okay, now, like I said, incredible what you can do. And I was mentioning ombres a moment ago. This is from the Stonehenge line, which is kind of a texture, kind of a rock looking line. Um, from Northcott, it also can be uh, seen kind of as a gradient. This is a two color quilt or two fabric quilt again. And it's just in the fabric placements is how you get some of the different variety in the design. So this is again, just a fabulous looking quilt, super fun, really cool design. And it just uses the basic block shapes from our Splice Magic. So, let me bring you to Synergy, the name of this particular project, the name of the project in the book, the actual quilt that's on the cover, on the chair that makes it everything look so cozy and comfortable. This is the Synergy quilt. And it has one major difference. Well, let's hold it the same sideways and all of that. Okay, so it's kind of an offset glow, kind of an, uh, a radiant, you know, pebble in a pool style drop design but not perfectly centered, not perfectly symmetrical. But what you're seeing in this particular project is all of the fabrics are paired with the same background. I'm going to call it white fabric right now. Okay, so you can see all of that. So the major change that I made in my Synergy project, so let's just call this one behind me the Synergy Remixed, was I remixed the fabrics, okay? And so this is what I did first off. I have the original fabrics that I used right here, and I'm gonna show them to you all in the color order, starting from what we kind of considered the center or the focal point of the quilt itself, which is right here where the pinks and the golds or the mustard color come together. Oh, and let me point out, I am using all of the Benertex solid reading batiks. So everything I'm gonna call a solid from here on out is actually a Benertex batik. And the other prints are the Allison Glass prints. Um, and I, I'll, maybe I'll try to read the selvage so I can tell you. I don't know the names of these. I'm sorry. This one is called Cross Stitch. So that was my first pair. And in every color grouping or color bank, you're going to pair one solid with one print. And they are not of the same color family, right? So this was the first grouping. Okay. So you can see that. Let's see here. The second grouping is 100 years uh, abacus dot. So that was the orange. This is terrible. You're going to make me read here on camera. But one of the things I pointed out in the video that I love are just some of these fun little random modern designs that show up right in there. And that's why it's called the abacus because it's an abacus right there. But so anyways, that limey green Benner text boutique with the abacus dot. Let's see if I can find a name on this one really quick. This is embarrassing. 
uh, looks like Village in the yellow, paired up with the kind of the baby blue or soft pale blue batik. You see that in here. So again, I'm just giving you the color orders on the way out. Glad I left the selvages on here. Oh, that makes sense. It's called Latitude. So the lime green print is Latitude with the navy Benertex batik there. Okay, fantastic. Oh, good. I'm seeing so many new folks are logging in. Hello, hello. I see East Tennessee and Michigan. Oh, it says I'm a little blurry. Well, I apologize. But depending on how you're looking at your stream output, it should be actually set for high resolution, but your computer may not be feeding high resolution. You may actually be able to adjust that in your settings unless all of you were to tell me I'm blurry, then I would know it's my settings and I probably have a smudge over there on the camera. I'm just being silly. But no, I'm not being silly about that settings. If in if one or two of you think it's blurry, check the settings on your YouTube. It might be looking at like it's at 480 or lower because it's a live feed, but it should be able to read up to 1080 for us. Um, boy, I cut the selvage off of this one just wrong. So it's kind of like an aviation design, kind of a computer. Uh, there's a little teeny seahorse in there. I don't know what to call it, but we're just going to call it Rob chopped off the selvage design. <laughs> okay. There's the purple and turquoise combo. This one's called embroidery. It's fun, like butterfly design, a bee, a bird. There's the beautiful red batik that we paired that up with. Okay. Checking to make sure you're all not telling me things are blurry there. And then one of the last ones that I loved was that purple that had the stripe. It's called oval stripe there, again, from Allison Glass. And um, we have the uh, wonderful orange batik that's paired up. And that's the ones that go all the way out here into the far corners. So, yeah, actually the red purple, which almost looks a little darker, is the second to last color. The oranges there read as the actual last, last color. So that's where we're at on our fabric choices. And um, there are different size quilts and there's different layouts and different mathematics and different designs. So to help protect the authors, Tiffany Hayes and Christy J. Smith, as well as not confuse the matters, I'm going to tell you all just get the book so that you can do the different quilts and the accurate sizes. What I'm gonna do now is using our leftovers from this particular quilt. So if you want just the info on this quilt before we finish the pattern and everything, just pay attention. You're gonna get that info right now. But the other quilts I just shared with you, they may be different. That's what I'm trying to explain. Okay, so let me just move this here, put the iPad over here so I can still monitor the comments a little bit. And now I'm gonna point out that I'm starting with every pair of fabrics that I just went through, and I'm basically making five inch wide strips by the whole length of our fabrics, right? Okay, so five inches, make your strips. This one I've been chopping into for the next part of the demonstration. And once those are five inch strips, guess what comes next, folks? That's right five inch squares, okay? So you're gonna make your five inch squares and I want you to pair them up with a solid and a print and go ahead and put those right sides together now while you're starting to handle everything, while you're just kind of getting that prep work or the started the organizing, right? So my print is face down on top now of the batik. The batik is going to be like a solid. You might be using solids. You might be using the same fabric. So just go ahead and let that be. I'm going to now mark a diagonal line because we are talking about half square triangles. So you knew this was coming. I've got the wonderful sew line pencil, but I've got uh, multiple colors in here. So I'm just using a light color or the white chalk right now. And I'm just going to draw myself a nice diagonal line just like that. And now, and you probably won't be able to see this as good as in the normal videos, because normally I've got a bunch of different cameras and we edit it all together for you. But we're going live, so this is fun. Right now, I'm just going to sew straight on top of that line. So we're not talking about a quarter inch stitch or anything, just straight on top of that drawn line, right sides together with our fabric. How are you all doing out there? Okay, people are saying it's clear. That's wonderful. 
<laughs> Good, because I really want to make sure you can see what we're doing, right? So now you see the stitching right on the chalk line. Next thing is on two sides, but both of the same side of our stitch line. So this side and this side, I'm also going to do a quarter inch seam allowance on the outside edges. Let me show you that. So I'm sewing down one of the outside edges. And you could chain piece these by doing all of the diagonals and then all of the edges. Or you can do like I'm doing, which is one side and then the other. So now I'm sewing down the other. But the key is that you do both of the outside edges on the same half of one of the half square triangles. Let me show you that. Okay. So hopefully you can all see that nice and clear, but I have a diagonal line that I've stitched first. That was on top of the chalk line. And then I've stitched outside and outside. So I need both of these stitchings on this side of that half. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And now we're gonna cut and we're gonna cut a quarter inch. So that's the big half square triangle is over here. So I'm gonna cut a quarter inch, making sure that that quarter inch cuts into those threads that finish off those outside edges, okay? So as I get ready to do this, I'm gonna use a straight ruler first, and I'm gonna say everything I just said a second time. I'm now laying my quarter inch mark on the chalk line, and the ruler is going to cut, or the, the cutting blade is gonna cut into the sides where the thread is on the outside edges. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut right through there, and now I have effectively made one, of the large half square triangles. The other side is still stitched on both sides, so now I need to cut across here, which will have sewing here and sewing here, which makes two of the other triangles. The small ones, we'll call them. So I use a straight line on a big ruler, and then I line it right up to the tip where those threads are, and then I go ahead and I cut right through, and so now I have two small and one large from one pair of squares, okay? Checking to make sure you're all following along. Oh good, Judy's here and Karen's here and Cynthia's here. It's a romper room, I've got the mirror right, isn't that great? Anyways, um, okay, any questions? If you have questions, you probably could type them in at this point because I am able to track what's going on. So hopefully you're all enjoying this. Now, I wanna show you there's a couple of other rulers. If you don't already have them, you're probably gonna want them in your sewing rooms especially if you're like me and you love half square triangle style quilts. So one of them is called the slotted trimmer. And there's actually two rulers in a package, but I've already removed one from the package so we can use it today. This thing is really, really cool. And we're going to start with this. There's one that does inch and a halfers and the other one that does inchers. So one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, or solids, ones, twos, threes, fours, if that makes sense. So that one I can leave in the package. I'm gonna use the one that has the half inch marks and I'm gonna just take it on the big um, triangle first and we are gonna cut this down to a four and a half inch raw half square triangle. So there's one of these that says four and a half inches across it and there's a stitched line which is dotted and there's a straight line which is gonna be where that trim line was. So I lay that dotted line on my thread and that's what now gives me a nice square edge to my triangle. I'm hoping you can all see okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut from the edge and the edge all the way to the tip. What that has done is it's cleared off the edges, but this little guy also has these little grooves. You can go in or out of them and that allows me to actually cut off or dog ear the corners of that half square triangle. So that's pretty dang terrific if you ask me, okay? Secondly, right, we have the other kind of ruler or trimmer that works great for half square triangles and you could do all of it with this as well. This is the block lock ruler. So the trick was with the slotted trimmer, you noticed I didn't press yet. So I did all the cutting first 
Now I'm at the ironing board and I'm going to press all of my blocks into the prints. But because we're going to have points going in all different directions, really there isn't a real rule for this particular uh, splice magic technique. Okay, so this one I cut first and then I pressed and that was using the slotted trimmer. And then with the block lock, we need to press first and then trim. So I'm going to press again into my prints, and that's just so that it's consistent. It doesn't make any difference really for this project. It's just I like assembly line quilting. It's one of the reasons I like to quilt. Now a block lock ruler has a groove on the bottom side, and that locks into our seam allowance, right, but from the top side. And so as I do this, let me see if this probably makes it easier for you. What I just need to do is make sure that I've winded it up so that I'm down the center of the groove. And the first one's a trim around the outside, trim and trim, okay? So that cut that, and then I just slide that, but I also would be wise to have one of those efficient Susan mats, rotating cutting mat. So now I can move this down to cut to the size that I need. These smaller ones are two and a halfs where the big one was a four and a half. And technically you just learned all of the information you needed to make the quilt that is behind me, right? So that's the way that the block lock works. I'll show you that again. And that's just because I have two of these to make. And as I first laid it on there, I could see that my lines overlapped. My straight line of my center of the ruler was not running up the seam allowance. So that's why I knew to spin that around. So I got the correct direction first. Then I'm just gonna rotate. Make sure my outer lines are lined up for two and a half and everything's locked into that seam allowance. This is a really great ruler set. They make a bunch of different sizes from Block Lock. I teach a lot of classes and I've met some of my students out there that seem to have either real shaky hands nowadays or they just don't have quite that upper body strength to put the pressure on the ruler or the template to keep their hands safe and things are moving around on the table. That's one of the reasons I really like the block lock tool is it really locks into the seam allowance and just allows for a really precise precision cut. Even challenged with maybe a lot, lack of upper body strength nowadays, um, you know, or you're challenged with just having some shaky hands or some arthritic hands. It happens to all of us over time, I hear. Um, but we always have ways that we can work around it, which I think is pretty exciting. So I'm gonna do a quick questions check here. Um, let's see. Any questions I can answer? Oh, I see Cynthia loves the tool. She's already got it out there. Uh, great. Everybody's saying the video is nice and clear. All the way in Finland, it's clear. Oh, my goodness. This is such a blessing. Cecilia from Finland. That's so great. Okay, Jamie's in Tennessee. She says she can see it going great. Okay, now, folks, I hate to sign off so early because I do have just a little bit more time I'd love to spend with you. And I did make a second example. So can I show all of you this again, just to help it kind of concrete in? We'll just go through all of those steps and um, and help you all learn, or maybe folks are just tuning in and we're looking at the Splice Magic Book. This was written by Tiffany Hayes and Christy J. Smith. They're family members, team members here at Stitch in Heaven. So it's really fun to promote their book. Um, this video will be recorded and it will then go live. So if you just came into the video, I did a show and tell of quilts in the beginning. You can see those just by watching the recorded video. And also, I would love to know uh, what you think about some of these live demonstrations. So please let me know in those comments. But it'll be easier if you leave those in the recorded videos as well, because I can go back and see them. And I was stalling long enough to make sure that you all wanted to see this demo a second time. Um, and before I dive into the demo a second time, let me just take a moment and point out the layout in case some of you do need to get going for the rest of the afternoon. The center here is not the center of the quilt. It's slightly offset. So it's closer to this edge and this edge than the other two. And I did that, one, because it follows the project in the book that is called Synergy. So Splice Magic is the book. The quilt project is Synergy, and we just did kind of a remix of color. So here is that center point. And the way I did it is I literally just made tons and tons and tons of the big and the small half square triangles. And the book will tell you how many you need of each. And then I just went to the design wall as big and small units, and I laid them in rows on the design wall. 
And then I basically stitch them together into units like this. And in this particular project, they basically all feature this style of unit where you have the big and the smalls. And basically, if you look at the triangles, they're all facing in the same direction. That's one of the sub rules for this kind of project. They're not all in the same direction as each other because you can see they're going in different directions, but they're in the same direction as their companion, if that makes sense. But some of the other quilts I showed you were all over designs, and in those you definitely will need the book to help you follow the layout. But most of the work is done on the design wall, and it's really fun to take it nice and easy. So just keep your stacks organized by color first. And you could either start in the center, but for me, I found it was easier. I just started on one outside edge and just worked the block patterns as I went, looking at one big and two smalls as I went, a big and a small as I went. Last thing I'll say about this particular project, if you kind of look, it's like the blocks rotate, right? So my big is on this side, then it's on this side, then it's on this side, then it's on this side. But because I'm at the center, then that flips but you can kind of follow that opposite directions pattern or the big on one side, the small on the other. Maybe that makes a little sense. Maybe if I just stop talking for a moment and let you look at it. Yeah, that's long enough. <laughs> All right, let's sew one more of these together, cut it open, and then we'll let you get back to whatever else you think that is more important to be doing than quilting, and I can't think of anything myself. Okay, that line has been drawn. That line is a stitched line. That is not a marker line. That is the sewing line for today. So I'm sewing right down the center of that line. Right sides together on my fabric right now. Using a batik, I'm calling a solid and a print. I'm calling a print. So there was that first line. Now I'm going to sew the outside line and the outside line on the same side of that divider. Okay. We're doing that with a quarter inch seam allowance. quarter inch off the outside edge. Okay. Let's just bring this needle up here. Where's that button? There we go. And I'm just going to pivot. Okay, so once again, there's the diagonal line and then two sewing lines on either side, right? So this is the two smalls, this is the one large. Take that down and you can technically, if you were using just the slotted trimmer, you can use that slotted trimmer, lay that line right on the threads and just remember you're cutting through the threads on the outside edges. That's the way you'll confirm that you have cut the correct side. So you've made the large half square. Okay, and then you can rotate this. And technically, you could still use it using that outside edge. Cutting through to form the two small ones. And then if you're using your slotted trimmer, we're just going to line up the four and a half inch mark on the threads again. And I think this might be my preferred out of the two. I like the block lock because it feels really safe. And I can't say I love cutting back into these grooves, but I do love having the dog ears go away. I'm just always afraid I'm going to dull my cutter right there or right here. Okay. But it does work really nice, and I think it's slightly more efficient. And we can also use them on the smaller ones, too. Okay, so I can do this by coming up to the two and a half inch mark because the smaller ones are two and a half inches and the same thing. As long as that thread line lines up, you're cutting a perpendicular triangle or a nice right triangle there. And again, you can come in here, but boy, that makes me nervous. I kind of am actually just putting like a downward pressure because there's a, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a wider slot kind of lets things get in there a little easier. And it uh, looks like I missed that one anyways. But not by much. But it does dog ear those little corners off the small ones as well. Or if you're doing the block lock, simply iron first. Might as well iron all of these while I'm over here. And I'm going to sign off in a few moments, folks, and make sure you get your questions over there to the iPad so I can make sure I address them while I've got you here. If you're just signing up or just signing on, we were playing with the Splice Magic book. 
This is the Synergy Remix quilt behind me. I've got the block lock ruler in my hand, upside down, now right side up. But I've locked that seam in there and I'm just gonna trim and trim, rotate the scraps out of the way. And then I slide to the accurate mark I need for this one again, two and a half. And you probably noticed that regardless of which ruler, because I'm using the same math, I'm getting the same size pieces and I can put them all back together very nicely. So that one was done with the block lock ruler that I, again, I also love to have. Okay, let's make sure. Karen says she likes the explanation. Oh, fantastic. Uh, quarter inch, quarter inch seam, Pam, on the outside edges, but the down the center, I was basically sewing on the chalk line. So there isn't a quarter inch, you're right on the chalk. Uh, so the diagonal, the big one was on the chalk, the outside edge is yes, quarter inch from your outside edge. Great question, Pam, thank you. Um, oh, you like the live demos? Ah, great, Pam, I saw that you asked the question, I missed it the first time. Um, wonderful. Oh, we've got a greetings from Germany as well. Uh, final sizes on these blocks. Well, this is four and a half now because that's what it was trimmed to. These are two and a halves. These go together to make two, uh, together to be a four and a half basically when they're done because of the quarter inch seam allowance. Hopefully that makes sense. And then they're basically rectangles once they're done. Um, and I don't remember that math off the top of my head. So I'm going to stop embarrassing myself right there. Uh, four and a half by something. How's that sound? Uh, all right. What other questions have I missed? Final size of the quilt. That I want to say was about 60. I want to say it was like 54 by 62, something about there. Um, I could snuggle on underneath it on the couch, especially if there was like some nice minky on the back or something. Pretty fun. Um, Okay, what else have I missed? I think I've got all the questions answered. Wonderful. Okay, so give you another second or two to get a final question in as I give my last shout out and promo to my friend, Rhonda Pierce from Schmetz Needles. Please, please, please make sure you sign up right away. We only had 100 seats left when I went live today. The registration just opened. We are doing on October 20th a live Zoom event so you can watch from the comfort of your own PJs at home. When you sign up with us, you're gonna get a wonderful assortment of needles, a great book that explains all of the things you're gonna learn in class, a super cool color chart that you can keep with your sewing machine, which I refer to all of the time in case you don't know what size or style your needle is. You're gonna learn what all those sizes mean, what all the names mean, all the different sizes and types and different things. Probably get some questions answered on maybe why you're struggling with some tension issues or free motion issues. It is a Zoom class, so we can actually ask questions personally at the end of, of either myself or Rhonda. I'll be there, of course, as the MC. And um, so it's just going to be fantastic. Rhonda is very entertaining. She is incredibly knowledgeable. Um, so there is a link at the bottom of this video. And then also you can always go to stitchinheaven.com and they have an events and classes page. So click on that drop down and just go to classes and look for a nice big red and blue banner there that is the needle knowledge class and we're super excited to have all of you uh, signing up for that because it's going to be incredible um, sign up and you'll get your needles in the mail and you'll be ready for the workshop that is on October 20th with that said I'm not sure what else I'll be doing here this week as far as live video goes so make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel it's not impossible we'll put the camera on and do something wild I am going over to Tiffany's house tonight for, to eat tacos so maybe we'll bring the camera over there and embarrass her a little bit no promises just saying that's all <laughs> so she's watching she's probably already locked the door right uh fantastic um Oh, question here as I'm starting to sign off. Um, two questions I see that are important. Do I use a design wall? Absolutely, especially on this project. I needed the design wall to make sure I got everything laid out in order because I was just following a color diagram like you would have here. Let me show you in the book, right? So I was following that, making sure I had my colors laid out in order. And we're going to actually make sure that that color diagram is available. We're going to make this quilt.
yards. Um, quilt size 56 by 72. That was a question that was asked a little bit ago. Um, so I believe I used half yards of 12 different fabrics. So that should be six total yards. And of course I have leftovers that I was just showing all of you. Um, but I always cut big because I like a stash. Sorry, I said it right here. I like a stash. I do. <laughs> um, all right. Well, fantastic, folks. Thanks again for being here. I will see all of you really soon. We are working on a fabulous tutorial for next week uh, with Abby Stevens. I think you'll absolutely love it. Super fun quilt. And uh, like I said, we'll be going live. You never quite know. Uh, so make sure you're subscribed and we'll see you all real soon. Thanks for being here, everybody.